Hi, this is Brian Forrester, and today we're going to be exploring a site in Jordan that you've probably never heard of. It's called Little Petra. Now, you're likely acquainted with Petra itself, Petra proper, and that is located about a half hour drive from Little Petra and was clearly made by the same civilization. Now, when we got there, we were told, Would you like to see a well? So, of course, we said, Sure but we were shocked when we were actually able to go through this locked door and see the scale of this quote-unquote well. Now you can see the tool marks there on the wall, exactly the same as what we see in Petra, a series of pointed chisels it would appear, and it's just the sheer scale of this reservoir carved into the bedrock, which is quite astonishing absolutely massive and could contain thousands upon thousands of gallons of water. The question is who made it and how? So there you can see the census scale with the pointing finger. Absolutely vast and it's one of those surprise things that you have no idea exists until you get there with a local guide. So this is Little Petra, or at least this is the outskirts of Little Petra. Lots of carving into the sandstone rock face. And it's much, much bigger than what we first uh, thought it was. It's not as big as Petra proper, but it's clearly an extension of Petra. There you can see in the background some staircases going up in the bedrock all sorts of openings and caverns and doorways. And again, if you're going to go to Petra, it's obviously well worth it to go to Little Petra as well. So this still is not inside Pet, uh, Little Petra itself, but we're going to be exploring some of these incredible chambers that are carved into the bedrock. So I would say this is one of perhaps 50 or 100 relatively large chambers at Little Petra. You can clearly see the tool marks. They don't seem to be in that great of a pattern. But then we're going to see actually right there, see those fine tool marks. So there are three different types of chisels that were utilized at Little Petra, a roughing out tool, and then a medium tool, and then a fine finishing tool. And these are exactly the same tool marks that we see at the main Petra site as well. So now we're going to actually go inside Little Petra. Like Petra itself, it has an entrance, which is locally called the Seek, which is a very narrow passage and that's how you get into the main part of the structure. It does obviously seem to be a defensive sort of thing, a natural opening that was then enhanced later on. So there is one way into Petra, and then at the very end, there's another way out. <clears throat> so it does seem like it was fortified. It was a, a specialized place where very specific people lived and others were kept out. Now we see more of these pointy chisel marks, tool marks here. And again, the idea that all of this was shaped using hand tools is highly unlikely, just because of, once again, the sheer scale. So now that we're inside of Little Petra, you can see some very beautiful columns there and lots of staircases carved into the bedrock. And lots of these chamber openings showing extreme weathering. So now we're going inside one of them. You can 
can see that it's relatively large. All the blackening caused by local people and their cooking fires over the course of hundreds and hundreds of years. And some of these are actually occupied to this very day, which is quite astonishing. Now there's one of the massive staircases cut into the bedrock itself. And there are a couple on the right there from Vancouver who were part of our group. And there is uh, our friend Keith, guy with the beard from England. He's been on many tours with us. Lots of things for sale as per usual. And now we're following Keith as we go deeper and deeper into Petra, or Little Petra, sorry. Also this very strange blackening of the external surfaces, mainly on the western side. And we saw lots of uh, evidence of that as well at Petra, which you're going to see in an upcoming video from our 2019 adventure there. This guy is actually set up a little tea cafe inside of one of the giant chambers. So once again, the Jordanian government is actually quite lenient about people uh, to some degree living in Little Petra and also in Petra itself, at least for the day. Now once again, lots of tool marks you see on the surfaces, more of these pointed chisels, no real even pattern. And Another one of the chambers there. And as far as I can remember, the walkway through Little Petra, it's <clears throat> excuse me, somewhere between half a mile and a mile long. So calling it Little Petra is a little bit facetious, but Petra itself, the main location, is about seven miles from one end to the other. Now we're walking up another one of the staircases carved into the surface. And compared to the first time that we went to Little Petra, uh, we're going to be doing, this is a much more thorough investigation than before. Here on the wall, you can see more of these tool marks, relatively rough. And then farther up the staircase, You can see repair work, of course, there. Once, <clears throat> once again, the couple from Vancouver. And here we are in another one of the chambers. But here on the ceiling, you can see very fine tool work. Parallel rows of these pointed chisel marks. These look more like machine marks to me than the previous ones we saw, and which you can see here, very even, evenly spaced, even penetration. So I think an example of lost ancient high technology. And once again, going up the wall, here are even tool marks at a 45 degree angle. And an overview from where I was previously standing, looking down on the main walkway of Little Petra. Now we're continuing, of course, to go towards the end of it. And we're going to come to a very large staircase, which you can see in the distant background. And last time I didn't go all the way up, but this time we're going to see where this very big staircase, where it ends up. So this is the beginning of that staircase. A fair number of tourists here today, a tiny fraction compared to those that go to Petra proper. And higher and higher up we go. Quite a lot of um, wear and tear on these surfaces, and then a lot of repair work, as you can see over the course of time. 
it said that the Nabataean people were the ones who constructed Little Petra and Petra proper, but I think, to be honest, that they found both of these locations approximately 2,000 years ago and simply occupied them. I think both locations are much, much older than what standard academia believes. So this is a relatively difficult staircase to go down, but we did make it. And now we're going to go through and see what is at the very end. Again, you see scorching on the flat surfaces here. I think this is evidence of lost ancient cataclysmic damage because once again, it's mainly on the western surfaces, just like we saw and will see at Petra in my upcoming video. So this officially is the end of Little Petra, but down in the valley, as you walk along over the course of time, you wind up at Petra proper. And I'm intrigued to know whether there are other structures in between Little Petra and Petra itself. I've been told there aren't any, but the only way to find out will be someday to return and have a look. So now we're coming back from the back end towards the front end, down hundreds upon hundreds of these stone stairs. And finally, making our way back down to the bottom. Again, notice the blackening of some of the surfaces of the stone. And cavern or chamber after chamber after chamber. To properly see Little Petra takes a minimum of about three hours. So now we're back at the tea cafe. And since we're here, why not go inside and inspect it and sit down with uh, our guide and our friend Yusuf Awiyan and have a cup of tea and explore the inner surfaces of this, one of the larger chambers at Little Petra. There's our friend Robert from Vancouver. He's been on different tours with us. Once again, you can see some tool marks on the surfaces. Blackening created by hundreds of years of occupation by the local Bedouin people. And finally, walking back out of the Sikh. So the two major places to visit in Jordan in terms of uh, ancient structures are Petra and Little Petra. Um, it's a very nice country, very friendly people. And if you're anywhere in the area, such as in Egypt, it's well worth going for a visit. So upcoming in September of 2019, we're exploring Turkey with one space open, and that's it. And in January, we'll be going to India to explore lost ancient high technology and machining marks there. In March of 2020 is our annual trip to Egypt. Once again, lost ancient high technology and metaphysics. Right after that, we'll be going to Israel to explore examples of lost ancient high technology, uh, especially in Jerusalem. And then June of 2020, return to contact in the desert in California. Tickets available now.
and also in June of 2020, the, our annual Inti Raimi Inca Celebration of the Sun Tour, including Machu Picchu and much, much more.